Hello everyone, welcome to the Rugby League Lunch Hour here on loverugbyleague.com. I'm James Gordon, joined by Drew Derbyshire. Um, we're going to talk about the Nines World Cup and Nines in general. Um, Great Britain test match this weekend against Tonga. Um, we'll first have a run through of all this week's Rugby League news. We're sponsored by Betfred, thanks to them as always for their support. Please do keep an eye on loverugbyleague.com day in day out for all the latest news, views and what have you. Um, I'll have a quick run through then Drew, you stop me whenever you want. Um, a bit of news from the Championship, just breaking maybe in the last hour or so. Um, London Broncos have signed Reese Curran from Toulouse, which is a decent pickup. I think he was, there was a bit of a rumour he was going to go last season, wasn't there? And, um, that never happened. Uh, and in response, Toulouse have signed Samoa International Frank Winterstein on a two-year deal from Penrith. Winterstein has played in Super League for Witness and Crusaders in the past. Did he play for Wakefield? Well, he had a little since at Wakefield, yeah. but I think he only played a handful of games. Um, so, obviously, Toulouse moving quick. They've now got Winterstein and Harrison Hansen in the back row, which are the... Uh, Pretty Toulouse, good. So it's good, think, good signing. Winterstein were literally playing in the NRL in 2019. Toulouse will be the favourites for the Championship, do you think, next season? I, it's, it's always a tough one, I think, with Toulouse because you always assume that they'll be up there because they are a full-time outfit. But I'm, I'm st I'll probably stick to my guns, to be fair, and, and probably push Lee more towards um, promotion for, for next year. But obviously, it's it's early days, and I assume um, Lee and Toulouse and Bradford and well, no, we'll talk about them, but, but I assume that, I assume that them clubs will ones. make a lot of signings. I think uh, Toulouse probably lost. To... I think Toulouse probably lost more home games last season than they would have liked. Yeah. Um, they lost to Witness. They lost to Witness at the start. Yeah. Um, lost to Toronto. And then obviously lost to Featherstone in in playoffs did as well. It, did Barrow do? Not beat Toronto. Oh. Did they? Did Barrow do? I think they were, I didn't think obviously Featherstone were there, but. But certainly, they're, it's their away form, isn't it? A bit like Catalan, isn't it? To lose his away is where they... Because realistically, to win the league, you're going to have to, you know... You can't afford to lose maybe more than six games. And obviously, um, that's that's you winning at least half your away games. Obviously, the issue for Toulouse as well is that finishing first doesn't get you promoted. You've got to get through the playoffs. And it's whether they can, you know, whether they can win on the road a couple of times to win the playoffs. Um, so yeah, a bit of cha chopping and changing there. I'd, I'd like to see Toulouse promoted though because I think it would be good to see Toronto, uh, Toulouse and um, Catalans in Super League and see how that little French derby works, see how the French television de um, deal pans out as well. I mean, there are two clubs because obviously you could have one French team that are, are guaranteed a home game every week. Yeah. Um, there is a bit of speculation that Catalan and Toulouse are going to try and do some double headers this year. So maybe Catalan will play one of their loop fixtures at Toulouse's ground before a Toulouse or after a Toulouse game because of course Toulouse is going to be playing at the Rugby Union ground, which it's is a twenty thousand capacity there. Yeah, yeah, a lot bigger. So um, I think Catalan have played there actually before. Um, I'm sure they played Hull KR there. We're, we're going I to France in a couple of weeks, aren't we? Yeah, we're there. We're going to check it out. We'll check it out, I suppose. Um, there's been a lot of news in Championship this week, more so than in Super League. Sheffield have um, given a new deal to USA International, Corey Macklin. Uh, York have signed Jordan Baldwinson on a one-year deal. They're building a good squad, haven't they, York? For, well, York, we, we, we didn't mention York then. They've signed, obviously, Danny Walsh yeah. from Hull. Chris uh, Clarkson. Jordan Baldwinson was at Leeds and Wakefield. Chris Clarkson, who's, who's won James a, a Super League yeah, title. Green. Signed James Green from Bradford. Yeah, got York a good team. Could, yeah, because I, mean, I think I mean York did well last season, but they didn't have like Will Sharp as well. They didn't have and Ben Johnston. They, York didn't have a brilliant team on paper last year. I think you looked at their team on paper and you didn't really think maybe they would they would do as well as they did. So obviously this year they're, they're signing players that you know they're going to go into the season as one of the. Um, Big dogs. You know, one of the favourites, yeah. Um, Paul Sykes has signed a new deal at Dewsbury. Oldham have signed James Worthington from Wigan. Swinton have given a new one-year deal to Richard Lapori. Um, Featherston have promoted five reserve players to their first team. Ross Oaks has signed a two-year deal with Bradford Bulls. Widness have signed Pat Moran as well. So that's all the, the championship stuff. But let's talk about Bradford then. So... 
there's, a, there's obviously Bradford, as seems to be the case every year, there's obviously issues with Bradford financially or whatever's going on. Um, now, they're, they're, they're moving to Dewsbury basically, they're playing the home games in Dewsbury because they can't afford to keep running odds. So, um, Andrew Chalmers, the, the chairman, basically left or quit or whatever. Chris Brereton was going to take over and then pulled out at the very last moment. Obviously, he'd uncovered things that maybe he was uncomfortable with. And then, at a, was it at Fans Forum this all got announced? Eric Perez, the uh, Ottawa president, who was involved with Toronto Wolfpack, he's going to become the Bradford chairman. Um, interim basis. On an interim basis. Nigel Wood is involved somewhere in the background, which everyone's sure. trying to get to the bottom well, as, a, as a share, or his family, yeah, the shareholders. Sure. And then the Dewsbury chairman, Mark Sawyer, has taken 24.99% shares because you're allowed, you're allowed to up to 25% in another club. But, I mean, Bradford's just like, it's a bit like a dog that needs putting down, isn't it? And they've already been put down. They got put down once and Andrew Chalmers was going to be the saviour. But I think, I feel really sorry for Bradford fans because... Every time this happens, they, they're almost like Nigel Wood seems to come along, recommend the saviour, and then it, it collapses again. What have we already had? We've already had, what was the, uh, what was the Indian guy, the one with the Indian restaurants? He, he was yeah. the first one, something can. So then they had Mark Green, and then, they, and then they had Andrew Chalmers, and each one of those was meant to be the saviour. And then now, we, we've got to a point where... Well, what's, what's the fit and proper persons test that the RFL are supposed to carry out? What, what does this... Well, is Nigel what Wood? That, I mean, what does the ideal candidate is, have to? Is Nigel to do? Wood a fit and proper person? Because in terms of passing the test, because I mean, you know, you look at what happened at Halifax, you look at what happened at the RFL under his watch. Obviously, he took, you know, three hundred thousand payoff, whatever it was. He's working for the, he's the chairman of the International Rugby League, and it's like maybe fit and proper is not the right word, but certainly there's a massive conflict uh, of interest. I know people have said, oh, well, it's not the international game, but. I just it doesn't shed it doesn't show rugby league in a great light. Mm. I I had some conversations with some clubs earlier this year where um there was concerns raised about Perez's relationship with Nigel Wood. So it's interesting to see them both coming together here, you know, at, at Bradford. And that was from clubs who were wanting to get into League One who were being told that they had to pay a half a million pound consultancy fee. To get in, and there was a, a bit of debate over where that money was going. Um, I mean, it's not healthy for Bradford to be playing at Dewsbury. Mm. And, and you sort of think, well, what was the point in someone taking them over if they're not going to move them back to Bradford straight away? I know. I, I just think it's a mess at Bradford, if I'm, if I'm quite honest. But I think they'd just be. They, you, you're never going to get rid of the heritage of Bradford. Um, and I think starting a new club. Would probably be the best way uh, to they, move They forward. should have done that when they went. I mean, they have, don't forget they did start another club, but then. Well, they still have the same name. <laughs> still have the same, the same name, ground. and obviously the, there's all sorts of legalities, and you know that's a controversial move. They should have, in hindsight, started as. Yeah. Well, I mean, they could start as Bradford Rams now, and and start in League One and work their way up that way. But um, yeah, a bit of an untidy. They should situation. have started as, as Bradford. Uh, Owned by the fans and. Yeah, uh, and then and stabilise. You can then, still have the club colours and stuff yeah. like that, but a new logo, um, a new I, ground. I mean, and, and don't forget, they used to be Bradford Northern. Yeah, and obviously reformed and, and Bradford Bulls, and you know, so it's not it's not alien to, to yeah, Bradford. D David Taylor says, um, looking forward to the Bradford discussion. What on earth is going on? It seems like they always start with a clean sheet and then go downhill. If it's not a level playing field, then what's the attraction to buy it? And what are the buyers buying? Well, I mean, you. Well, I, I mean, that's, I mean, what, I that's, mean what, that's why Chris Brereton pulled out because if he obviously thought he was buying something, and it turned out there was stacks and stacks of more debt. Yeah, I mean, I mean, ultimately, a lot of rugby league clubs they haven't got anything have they? because they don't own the ground. There's no assets to them. The main asset you'd say that Bradford have got is that they're in the championship. Mm. That's ba you know, and, and obviously if you were to join if you were to join a, you know, we're told that teams you want to join are being asked for a five hundred thousand pound bond, so if you take over a club that's already in then you don't have to pay that. Um obviously you wouldn't have to get a year out of League One and, and get promoted that way. Um you know there is some value to Bradford Bulls as a brand but certainly it's diminished over the past few years. Um 
So it'll be interesting to see what goes on there. And, and also thinking about the rugby side of things is whether they can build a team capable of competing in the championship next season because they've lost a couple of players. I think, I think, it, I think it's massive keeping hold of John Kay, the coach. Obviously, he's. But then they had Kay last year and they didn't make the playoffs. Yeah, but they, they've got to, I think John Kay is a good man manager, isn't he? And it, it's, I think he's still a big, big attraction to players at that level. Um, so I think having him there will certainly do him well retention wise but also bringing new um, players to the club and can I just comment how quickly have the balls moved out to special measures well say, I've seen a few I've seen a few comments about that because obviously I think witness were in them for at least six yeah. months um, and yeah you sort of and again that raises questions because obviously you think well Nigel Wood's obviously got a nice relationship with the powers that be at the RFL so is he pulling some strings there um, I mean you look at Bradford since they were relegated from Super League in 2014 they got to the million pound game in 2015 but they've not been close to getting back since obviously they got relegated and they got promoted again and then last season was the first season back and yeah I mean you could say first season back in Championship they did okay but then when you look at what York did you sort of think oh well did Bradford underachieve last season? And I think I think Bradford at the start of last season anyway, uh, I heard that Bradford had the second highest uh, wage in the in the yeah, championship. Yeah, were they running the on a hybrid? Toronto. Were they running on like hybrid? Yeah, yeah. Or? I think they, I think I think it was twelve or thirteen uh, players that they had that were full time on full time contracts. And so obviously, and obviously they, they made a couple of big signings. They brought in Jake Webster from Cass at yeah. the time, who, who the, the year the year before was playing in a grand, Super League Grand Final. Uh, they spent money on Jai Hitchcock as well, who came in from Cass. They, they obviously had Chisholm as well at, at one point. And, they've got, and, and, they, and Bradford, have, to, to be fair to Bradford, they've got a couple of great younger kids as well, haven't they? They've got a good academy at Bradford mm. and, they, and they, they bring them through well, as well. Well, I mean, that's the other thing. They have to run reserves this year as well because they've got a Category 1 academy. So Bradford will have to run a reserve team in 2020. So again, that's another thing. Well, is that going to be playing mm. at Dewsbury? Uh, David, David says, what will the admission prices be to Bulls slash Rams games uh, if different? What to I, do, I don't think they're doing, I don't think they well, I mean, obviously it would be the home team, wouldn't it? So Bradford will charge up, Bradford charge up, Jewsbury charge up, Jewsbury charge Now, what about the Jewsbury chairman getting involved? I know he's, I think he said that there's going to be a fans forum or something next, next week or something where he's going to address Jewsbury's concerns. He sort of put a bit of a statement out saying, it's not going to affect his commitment to Dewsbury. I've seen some people say he's done a good job at Dewsbury, it's fairly steady, so why would he get involved here? Obviously, there's the connection with Bradford playing at Dewsbury because has he potentially budgeted for 2020 with Bradford being at Dewsbury? And obviously, it's in his own interest to make sure Bradford are there. But then at the same time, if you're taking on 25% of Bradford, are you taking on 25% of you know, yeah. a, a trouble, yeah. yeah. Um, is it is it something like is he is he offsetting that in that twenty five percent shareholding for the use of the ground? You, you mean you don't David really says know. is Robbie Hunter Paul still there? No, Robbie Hunter Paul left no, quite a couple quite of years ago. Right? Yeah. Uh, it was it was chief executive. Robbie Hunter Paul was there when uh, yeah. Mark Green was there. Yeah, was that 2014? Something 24, like that? 2015, 2015, yeah, 2014, 2015, yeah. Yeah, so he's in the area. He left some time ago. Um, I just hope for Bradford fans' sake, to be fair, more than anything, that they can just become. It's not. It's not about returning to the golden era or being being a Super League club now for the Bulls. It's it's just about having having a club that that you can support. Well, the, I in think the, while. the problem is is they're losing fans, aren't they? Because fans aren't yeah. rightly getting disillusioned. I mean, the ticket prices last season were obscene. You know, twenty five quid it was to get in at Oddsall. Obviously, they keep being sold this dream. This is like what the third or fourth time they've been sold. Oh, get behind us, support us, and you know we'll we'll take Bradford to the top. And it's like it's a bit like the boy that cried wolf. Now I'm sure every most Bradford fans are now sceptical over anyone who comes along. Um, not least now with Nigel Wood, who's not exactly the most popular character in rugby league circles. There's always going to be this this bit of they're not sure about how to take it. And that, you know I, I I have a few I have a few Bradford fans who interact with me on on Twitter and um, they're all a bit like what you know what on earth is going on how is this happening um, and the thing is is it's not a fans aren't a, a commodity they, they can they can turn away and that's mm. what's happening um, and this is one of the things that I always talk about when we talk about expansion is 
all the all the expansion stuff that goes on, if you've got clubs that are alienating just as many people as you're bringing on, you're not expanding. And I think that's something that rugby league needs to look at in general. Is you know why are people turning away from the game? Because then you just you just treading water. Now obviously people are going to come and go, but the way that Bradford situation is being handled is just mm. it's just ridiculous. Yeah, it's a farce. It is a farce. Um, thanks for your comments on that one. Um, we'll, we'll talk about a few other bits now. We've got a last interview with Justin Holbrook um, on the website now. His last interview as St. Helens coach. Um, we've got everything you need to know about the Great Britain Tour, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Leeds, we'll talk about this. Leeds have confirmed that Trent Merrin, captain Trent Merrin, will return to the club for 2020. Um, an interesting one, this, because... Is it good for a club that the captain's basically openly wanted to go and basically he's not gone because no one else will have him? Um, and then also, is the fact that no one else will have him a sign that maybe Leeds are paying him too much? Possibly. <laughs> Possibly. Uh, I think I think the market down under in terms of going to clubs, um, in terms of players going to the NRL, uh, is quite... Um, limited shall we say at the minute there's not a lot of movement going on in the NRL between between the clubs themselves a lot of players seem to be tied up on long term deals over it in Australia at the minute so that obviously means they'd have to, to pay a, a player big money uh, to release him from the contract in order to get married um, so obviously it's, we believe there's not a lot of money even, even down under there's not um, millions of money so uh, I think I think it was. I think it was always going to stay. Really, I think it would have been. It would have took a, a miracle move to 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 sign Merrin because it, how many? He's still got three years left on his deal. Yeah, well, we. I mean, we we've talked about this before, haven't we? He's on marquee, yeah. and we we've sort of discussed this before, where we think is you know Merrin's a good player. There's no doubt in that. But is that the best use of your marquee money? The only the, the only forward who I can think of at, at the minute who. Re, who demand marquee money and, and, and you'd be pretty willing to pay it is Luke Thompson at Saints mm. uh, I, I think apart from him maybe a Nelson Asafa Solomona at Melbourne Storm as well apart from maybe those two mm. um, I, don't, I don't think you, you, you'd pay that kind of money uh, well a Super League club would pay that kind of money um, for a forward I think I think Leeds realise that deep down uh, obviously they, they won't say it but I think they, they do know deep down that they probably should have bought because with the money that Merrin's on on a four year contract as well yeah, you, you could have yeah. splashed out on a world class half back I mean especially you could, when you look at say you could like, have got Jackson Ace and no problem where, especially when you look at like Reese Martin who they brought in mid season last year mm. he's done a fair job yeah. at the, in back row anyway and you'd imagine he's on a lot less money than, he, he, was than playing, he, he was playing reserve grade for Canterbury yeah, so. yeah, yeah and they must have been aware of him you know but, is it, but, but like it's, it's like uh, I think I think it might have been me that we're speaking about it that uh, Joseph Paolo at Saints uh, obviously he came over from Cronulla not on marquee deal but obviously you'd, you'd assume with him playing over 10 years in the NRL that'll be on big money mm-hmm. uh, yet they've they've got Morgan Knowles who, who I reckon <coughs> will be on less than Paolo and Morgan and look what Morgan Knowles has done in the last well yeah and obviously Paolo didn't even play in the grand final exactly um, and it, it's, it's, it's quite uh, it's an amazing story about Carl Amor isn't it because he was told at the start of the year by Justin Albrook that he was surplus to requirements basically he was free to find another club but Amor said no I want to prove myself here at this club he's, he's done well he's gone well this year as Amor pushed his way back into the team even if it is just on the bench because obviously <laughs> I don't think many forwards are going to get over uh, Alex Walmsley and Luke Thompson at the minute in that front row um, and obviously he started over Paolo in the final mm. and, but fair play to, to Justin Albrook as well for, for choosing players on form rather than the, the salary Talking about Leeds um, they were fined this week for a, a salary cap breach yeah. um, they were fined £20,000 10000 of which was suspended um, which basically doesn't mean you don't have to pay it unless you breach it again um, they went over, was it 100,000? Have I made that up? 55,000 um, over the breach, and it related to Jack Walker and Luke Briscoe being upgraded to full time, as well as Matt Parcell. Matt Parcell getting a new contract, which to me doesn't justify it because, you know, that's, that's a, the three players that breached it. Um, Leeds said 
that it was an administrative error on their part. Um, they are the seventh different team in the Super League era to breach the salary cap. Um, obviously, Wigan had it last year and got deducted two points. What, and then what I would get with these salary cap statements is why, why did they come so late? This well, because the men have a live cap, aren't they? I mean, we, I mean, bear in mind, Wigan, so Wigan only went over, well, say only, I mean, if you've gone over the cap, you've gone over the cap, yeah. in my opinion, but, but Leeds have gone over the cap nearly four, well, more than three times as much as what Wigan did. Um, Wigan got a two-point deduction, which, of course, was thrown out by an independent but It's because, obviously, human. Wigan, are, Wigan are appealed it, whereas Leeds accepted the RFL's decision, so that's why Leeds... No, yeah, but, no, but what I mean is, is obviously, the RFL's three. initial decision with Wigan was two-point yeah. deduction, whereas the RFL's initial decision with Leeds is a fine or whatever. Do you know what I mean? And that, uh, you know, It's a bit like, if you've got enough money to bust the cap, you've got enough money to pay a fine, haven't you? So it's a bit, is it much of a deterrent? Do we just get rid of the salary cap? Is the salary cap holding the game back? Do you think more, do you think you'd see the likes of Wigan and Leeds and Warrington maybe attract better players? I'd, or... I'd like to see it scrapped. And I know a lot of a lot of fans will probably go against me on that one. Um, I, I, in fact, I mean, no disrespect to Salford, but I Salford are a good example of why the salary cap should be scrapped. Because you look at Salford there as a club with next to no money, two and a half, three thousand fans mm -hmm. have managed to put a team together that competes because of the salary cap, which obviously in some ways shows that the salary cap is good mm -hmm. because it means they can compete. But then at the same time, you look at the setup at Salford, and there's no way. They should. It's almost a bit like it's a bit like Burnley competing for the Champions League places in Premier League, isn't it? You know, and I know everyone says, "Oh, well, you know, everyone's on the same amount of money and stuff." But the infrastructure and and, and the size of those clubs compared to Salford for Salford to get to a grand final, yeah, you know, is a massive. Not, I in some ways, but I think it, you have Wigan, Warrington, Saints, Leeds, maybe Hull. Oh, oh yeah, in Toronto. Catalan. Yeah, in Catalan. So, so you've got eight clubs there. Yeah. Who, and, who I mean, don't, and, don't, and don't forget, you've got maybe spend. Toulouse, maybe New York. Yeah, yeah. You so know. you've got you've got eight clubs there who would spend over the cap, and and you'd like to to think that some big names will come over from the NRL because it's not it's not just about playing in Super League. It's about players bringing their families over so they can go travelling around Europe for a mm. couple of years. Because I know um, James Maloney's mentioned that a couple of times in in interviews that that's mm. what. I mean, his family wants to do as well, so obviously um, they can go travelling around Europe as well, whenever they're, they're off as well. So I think it'd be a big attraction, especially Catalan is always always an attraction anyway. Mm. Uh, I think there there are still a couple of logistical issues with the Toronto situations, yeah, like uh, where regarding the players live. and, yeah, and yeah. stuff where where they live. But um, I think I think Super League. League have become quite attractive for, for players, especially the cap. You mentioned uh, um, you mentioned Catalan. They've they've given a three year deal to Steve McNamara, mm. um, which is an interesting one because I mean it feels like he's been under pressure ever since he took the job. I mean he had a horrendous start. I think did he win two of his first like fifteen games or something? They survived relegation in a million pound game against Lee. The following season they were really struggling. Let's be honest. They got Josh Drinkwater in. They got they won the Challenge Cup, which obviously then deflected mm. from the poor league campaign. They started well this season. They had the big game at the new Camp and then just fell away miserably and didn't even make the playoffs. You look at Catalan's team on paper and obviously the advantage they have of playing at home and um, they should be getting playoffs, shouldn't they? And obviously Def I understand definitely. I understand travelling's an issue um, for the away games, but is that become more psychological now than because I mean, let's be you know, yeah, okay, it's two hours on a plane and whatever, and you know they've got to do it every other week, and you know, but I sometimes wonder now, is it more of a psychological thing than an actual excuse? Mm, possibly, possibly. Uh, it, it, they've got to be getting the top five every year, especially that team that they have mm. in twenty nineteen. That that were a team full of stars over in the NRL and, and in Super League. When you've got the likes of Sam Tompkins, Greg Bird, Sammy Sony Lange. Um, Michael McAlorum. They've got, they've got a, a squad there full of uh, talent across the board. I, it, it actually annoys me to be fair how they don't get in the top five, and it annoys me how they just 
some games away when they when they play away from home they get absolutely battered and it just seems like they, they don't want to be the thing to be either. the thing last season though they actually got trolleyed at home a couple of times Salford yeah. did them didn't they did Casford do them I think one one of the games they got they, they lost they got yeah. battered at home a couple of times last season and but that, then other times like they, they beat Saint Helens yeah they beat Warrington yeah and it, it's like yeah well I think that's the more worrying sign for me is you know obviously yeah Salford had a good season and, and whatnot but. Usually they they can count on the home form, but last season they had a few miserable, um, yeah. you know, home performances as well. They have signed Joel Tompkins from Hull KR, and and I think Joel Tompkins is a in a good example of a signing Catalan make, which is just the wrong signing. You can't tell me that there's no French players that they can't sign that they can give a go in the back row or the front row, whatever. Rather than Joel Tompkins, I just don't. I, I think McNamara is potentially the right person because I think he understands what you need to do for player development and bringing through the French players and whatnot. But Joel Tompkins and Matt Whitley in a back row for Catalan, with all due respect to those two players, is there no better French or local players that deserve a chance in Super League? Well, obviously, we don't know the, the French game. Um... To a great degree, do we? Um, but you'd like to think that Catalans have got some good young academy players coming through. Obviously, Joel Tompkins effectively replaces Ken Edwards, who's gone to Huddersfield for next year. Is it? I won't say it's a, a, a disastrous sign. I just think this is. I don't know. I, I don't know what to think of the Joel Tompkins sign. It, it could work one or two ways. It could just be a poor move and it not work for all parties, or it could be. A really good move, and because obviously Joel's back with his brother, and um, despite what people say about them off the field, that was only one incident. Um, they, they played great together for Wigan. It's, I'm gonna I, 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 three years is a long time to offer Steve McNamara a contract, mm. especially like would he got that three year deal if they had if they had to won the Challenge Cup? I think if they'd not won the Challenge Cup, well, I mean, I think I think there's a little bit of stubbornness from Bernard Ghost because I think he's almost defended McNamara. He's almost like nailed his flag to the mast with McNamara, and I think he's determined to see it through. He doesn't want to say, "Well, actually, you're wrong," because obviously there was a lot of public speaking last year about Gijo, for instance. You know, they criticised Gijo. Um, you know, and I, I think maybe Gauss, Gauss is showing some loyalty to McNamara, maybe rather than the players, and he's basically re-emphasising yeah. that McNamara's the man. Uh, ben Hugo says, not sure he's re-signing McNamara for three years was wise. Uh, what sort of protocols do they have in his contract? Contract, I wonder. Well, no different to any other player, I guess. I mean, another forward at Catalan is Jason Battieri, and he pulled out of the France national team. Um, this week after becoming annoyed with the French Federation and its level of professionalism or lack of professionalism. Um, a bit of a, a bit of a worrying one this from France because they did have a it's a rather weak team, isn't it, that's gone over to Australia and played in the nines and they've got a couple of like exhibition games, I think. Um, some minor internationals, they're not even playing a proper country, are they? Well, I think. No, they they played the junior kangaroos, which is basically Australia's under twenty threes, but that, that, that's got some talent in it. It's got Kaelin Ponger and David Fafita, uh, and they also play the Western Division as well. But that, they're the kind of games I think France should be playing. Well, yeah, but they should still be playing Samoa or Fiji yeah, or something. Yeah, they should. Like they should. Um, but, 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 but at the least, point at I was going to make they're playing internationals, but. But they, yeah, by Thierry pulling out and then, like, say, they've, they've, they've not got. No, Morgan Estre, they've not got any Theo Fars, Roman Navarrete, uh, Mark Carella. Yeah. Gavin Springer, uh, Gavin Gijo. Springer, Tony Gijo, and then obviously Battieri pulls out as well. Yeah, worrying times really, because surely, you know, and I, I say this all the time. No food, yeah. I say this all the time about France is the point of Catalan, and, and to an extent the point of Toulouse being in the English system, is to try and improve the French national team, and it just doesn't seem to be... Um, it, it seems to be on the decline at the minute, yeah, compared yeah. to what it was 10 years ago. And I think the thing is with that is the RFL, for instance, are the ones taking the flack, if you like, by having the French teams in their systems. But unless the French Federation is going to help them or support them or whatever, it's not going to get anywhere. Um, and that's my concern with that. Um, before we go on to Great Britain and, and Nines, a, a bit more news. Lama Tazi has left Warrington. He is going to Australia to play 
Queensland Cup, is it, for Serena. Um, Wakefield have signed Josh Wood from Salford. Um, what else have we got here? Anything else we've not been through? Um, no, just by today was the last bit. Oh, and uh, Lois Forsell has retired Leeds women player. Um, let's talk about nines first, actually. So, obviously, it was the World Cup nines last year, last week. Um, Australia won the men's, New Zealand won the women's. Friday, Friday I really enjoyed. Friday was great. And then I wake up Saturday morning. First thing I see is England are rubbish. Second thing I see is rugby league's a joke. What's going on? Lebanon, two players in illegible. They've had the, the win against France taken off them. Um, and it was just like a typical rugby league thing, really. Like you had something good and then the following day it just turned into a bit of a bit of a nonsense. Well, and and it, all, it all relates to the governance of the game again because it's like, well, it's an international competition but it's being run by the NRL. So the NRL are running it by their rules, whereas if it was run by the international rules, then the under-18s would have been allowed to play. It's just like... But why, why didn't the NRL check <coughs> every single player's passport to, to confirm their age and... I mean, I, like, like I said, I, before the game. I, I've, I've got experience and worked in the administration of other sports and there's no way that that should be allowed to happen. You know, every player is surely registered. Every player, you should surely have the name, the date of birth, everything. And, and it's not that Lebanon lied. Yeah. They didn't lie in the thing that, you know, they've been just, open about it. They just thought it was... It was. I mean, I mean, the whole under-18s rule is a bit of an, a, a farce anyway, really. Yeah. I mean, you know, you should be able to play no matter how old you are. And obviously, that saved England because obviously without that deduction for Lebanon, England would have gone out because they lost to Lebanon. Um, I, I mean, obviously we enjoyed the games. Obviously Australia wins, so that was a bit boring. But um, it's raised the profile of nines, definitely. Um, and it's put it on the agenda. I know a few players. Did Sam Tompkins... Sam Tompkins yeah. said something about it, didn't he? Um, Sam Tompkins wants to, to see Super League adopt it. And all, but let's remember Brad Dwyer's comments as well last week. Yeah, about Magic Weekend. Uh, Brad Dwyer said that he thinks Magic Weekend should be turned into a nines competition rather than it being 13 a side. It'd get more fans into into watch it. Um, I don't know. I, I'm just, I've said it time and time again. Just scrap Magic Weekend. Have one game at Easter and then the other game at Easter played on the Magic Weekend. Uh, there's a bit of a murmur going around that there's going to be some yeah. sort of bank holiday nines competition. Um, is something that is something that's being discussed. That I think because they have the Easter Monday, May bank holiday, August bank holiday. There's been a discussion. I, I seen it on Twitter. I think Rod Stubb was mentioning it. That there's potentially an ongoing. Nine. I don't know whether it'd be just one-off festivals, if you like, or whether it'd count towards some sort of trophy. Um, I don't know. I, I, I enjoy well, it. got a habit of getting carried away with to things. Be, to be fair, I enjoyed the Nines and I enjoyed watching it last week. But I just think, well, in the, in the Super League calendar, where does it fit? Because yeah, you'd, you'd have to ditch the loot fixtures. We're, we're all... We've got loop fixtures. We, we already, we're already starting in January. You've got Challenge Cup, you've the got season, Magic Weekend. The season's ending middle middle of, well, beginning slash middle of October. But then at the same time, we're also saying that we want more international fixtures. Mm. So I, I just don't see, especially for the English best players and the British best players, because what do they do? Because they're going to have about three weeks off in the year. Nines has almost, almost got to be something it's that, got to be a substitute hasn't it so it's, yeah, it's got to it's replace got, magic yeah. weekend yeah. or it's got or they've got to scrap the loot fixtures they can't have they, a nines got, competition they, at the start they've almost, of the year. they've almost got to make nines maybe you know maybe nines is you know they could have had nines over here when great britain are down under and, and obviously you play non-great britain players in it do you know what i mean maybe that's the only way you could you could do it um, david, david taylor says at least uh, at least one of our forwards was too wooden for nines uh, Bateman did play. Is he injured? He would have been a shoe in. Well, I, I don't, think they're they, probably they saving Bateman for well, Bateman. Well, they, they didn't they didn't um, allow the NRL grand final players did they to into consideration or something? No, he's in the. How did Horsham play? Horsham might have played, didn't they? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. 
Yeah, well, I mean, I, there was thought that he had a bit of a knock, wasn't the Beeman? Um, so maybe they were just protecting him for, you know, for Great Britain. Um, I, I enjoy watching the Nines, but if, you, if you're going to bring it into Super, I, I, I don't think it'd, it'd draw in um, good attendance figures if it replaced Magic Weekend. I'm not going to lie. I, I don't think if they said, we'll have a Nines competition still at Newcastle next year, I don't think it'd get 60,000. What it do, what, well, you say that, but it doesn't get 60,000, does it? Well, because it gets 30,000 each day and probably... Twenty thousand yeah. of the same people. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't even think it'd get that though. I think it'd get about ten thousand each day, fifteen thousand. Yeah, it, I mean, I just don't think. Obviously, the NRL have confirmed that it's returning to yeah, their competition like, next year. I think it's February time. Sure, were they uh, doing that as the season opener again, like they did yeah, last? Was it last what, season or year? It will, it will be, won't it? It will be yeah. in Perth as well, which is kind of which is actually quite a good idea. Football, it's quite a nice pre-season yeah, no, it's, 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 it's okay for the NRL because they don't have a cup competition. They play far less games than game, yeah, yeah. uh, the Super League anyway. They don't have any loop fixtures. They they start they start way after us. Finish they early. finish uh, a couple of weeks before us. Uh, they, they have rep representative rounds. What? We just play normal games. Yeah. <laughs> so, so whereas they have like an origin, Fiji play Samoa or Papua New Guinea play Tonga, uh, uh, whatever in them rep- representative rounds. While Queensland play New South Wales, and Leeds we just got we've got Wakefield Leeds for fourth time this year. <laughs> um, so um, moving on to this weekend, Great Britain play Tonga on Saturday. Um, Tomorrow there is a test match between Australia and New Zealand. Are they the fo- are they the teams there? Have they named the seven teams yet? Mm-hmm. Australia are going James Tedesco, Josh Adokar, Latrell Mitchell, Jack White and Nick Hotrick, Cameron Munster, <laughs> Daly Cherry Evans, Josh Papala, Damien Cook, David Clement, Boyd Cordner, Wales <coughs> International Tyson Frizzell and Jake Trebojevic. Who's a um, Serbian descent who could play for the Serbian national team? Yeah, and then Ben Hunt, Payne Haas, Paul Vaughan, Wade Graham. Because of Mike. On the bench. Um, a pretty good Australia team. It, I mean, it is a shame Great Britain aren't playing Australia, isn't it? But it's just typical Australia, really, that they just, for whatever reason, they want to sabotage International Rugby League. I mean, what would it have been instead of, it, instead of Great Britain playing New Zealand twice? Imagine if they could have played. Great Britain could have played Australia, New Zealand, Tonga, Papua New Guinea. I mean, how good would that have been? Well, it's not, it's not good down to it, James. Let's get in the mood. Um, yeah, so, so that's Australia, New Zealand. So New Zealand's team is Roger Tuvasa-Shek, Kemma Marlow, our friend Charles Nicole Clockstad, Joseph Manu, Jermaine Asako, Sean Johnson, Benji Marshall, who captains them for the yeah. 20th time, a record. Lisa Armar, Brandon Smith... Jared Ware, Hargreaves, Brighton Nicora, Kenny Bromwich and Adam Blair. Um, Jerome Hughes, Zane Tetevano who's been linked with Warrington, Braden Hamlin and Corey Hawira. No. <laughs> um, Cody Nicarima reserve. Um, Kevin, they've got some decent reserves in there. Oh, yeah. Kevin, Kevin yeah. Proctor as well. So that is 10 past 10 UK time tomorrow, Friday. Is it on TV? Do we know? Is it watching it. RL? Might be. Um, I don't think it's on Sky. Not on Sky. Um, Charles Nicol Clockstad, who basically binned off the Cook Islands, will earn his first cap for New Zealand. Um, Tavano's also got five caps for the Cook Islands. Uh, Lisa Armour's previously played for Samoa. Well, I mean, National Rugby League. Um, Heritage. Great, Great Britain. Bolton. Great Britain Tonga is Saturday morning. It's 7.30 on BBC Two. Kick-off is at 8. Um, I'm just looking for teams here. There we go. Um, we've got the squads, of course. Um, oh, no, he's named the 17, hasn't he? Yeah. So, it's not too dissimilar to what we were talking about. We were a bit unsure about the halves, weren't we? So, he's gone Coot, fullback, which we... I think the back five we got, didn't we? Coot, mm-hmm. fullback, McGilvery and Hall on the wings, Hardaker and Gildart in the centres. It was halfback we were debating. Um... I thought he'd go Williams and Hastings, but he's gone with Widdop and Hastings. Um, bit of a kick in the teeth, is it, for, for George Williams? Probably, yeah. Um, I, don't, I, I don't think we can really complain, though, to be fair. I think... We, I know Widdop's been injured for a lot of 2019 with the Dragons in the NRL. 
but he's back fit. He played the last couple of games of the season, so obviously he's, he's fully match ready. And Hastings is man of steel in Super League, been the best player in Super League this year. It is a bit gutting for Williams, but I think I think he'll play against New Zealand or Papua New Guinea. Isn't it funny though, right? That Great Britain have got Jackson Hastings, who was basically rejected by. Oh, the, David, David oh, Taylor says the Australia New Zealand game is on Sky. Oh well, there as are the, the ladies game. Well, that would be nice Zealand for us in the morning. Um, isn't it funny that Great Britain have got Jackson Hastings after the NRL basically give him the elbow? Um, and the NRL have signed George Williams, and now he can't get in the Great Britain team for an Australian who they basically kiboshed. That's ironic. I don't know, but the, the rise of Jackson Hastings has been remarkable. I don't, I, I don't think anyone, I don't think any any British person anywhere over here has a bad word to say about Jackson Hastings, do they? I think. I think well, he, apart from everyone, the fact that he's Australian, I think everyone kind of likes him. I think apart from the fact that he's Australian. I think every, everything else is sound, but I think the main issue people have with him is that he's Australian. Well, he's got English heritage. Um, the forwards, we were quite surprised with the forwards because... Well, the, it, it, it wouldn't be on planet if it weren't for his English grandmother, would it? Well, let's not get back. We'd all be playing for yeah. the same country, wouldn't we, Adam and Eve? Um, the pack is Chris Hill, Josh Johnson, Luke Thompson, John Bateman, Elliot Whiten and James Graham. Chris Hill, the big surprise there. I think we had five of them... Five of them six, didn't we? But Chris Hill's the one where you think, you know, uh, I mean, I don't think he's been very good. For, he's not been at his best for Warrington this season. No, but he, I, I don't think he's, he's, he's... Like everyone's describing <coughs> or making him out to be a bad player. I, just, I certainly don't think Chris Hill's that. Um, maybe Liam Watts will be a bit gutted that he's not made the side. Um, but not made the squad. Oh, but not made the squad. But um, I don't... I, I don't want to mourn too much about Chris Hill, to be honest. Um, I mean, I mean, it's, I think it's, it's interesting to it'll be interesting to see why George Burgess wasn't selected for the, for the squad. Whether whether he's not been picked because he's moving over to Wigan or whatever he's doing, or finding out in Wigan, or if he's just not been selected. But obviously, he's left the the uh, the rabbit holes to join Wigan, and obviously Wayne Bennett's coach of the rabbit holes. So mm-hmm. Wayne Bennett obviously been a fallout. So maybe see that there's. Because obviously Wayne Bennett didn't really want to keep him, and they didn't offer George Burgess a, a new deal. So whether he just doesn't really rate him as much as he does the, the other British props, or unless he, he doesn't want to be selected because he's moving his family over. I think. Uh, who knows? I think you look at Hall, Widdop, and Hill are three Wayne Bennett picks, aren't they? Where they're three players that Bennett has continually picked for England, and obviously he's kept the faith with them for the Great Britain. Um, team rather than maybe using players that he didn't know a great deal about. Well, if it, if it, if it was picked on form, Regan Grace would be over Hall and McGilbury this year. He was. Well, I mean, you'd imagine Makinson would have got in, wouldn't no, you? No, Ma- Makinson would have been in. If he wasn't injured. Obviously, he's injured, so you, you can't really consider him. But Grace, he obviously played for, for the Wales in the World Cup 9 last weekend. Scored a great try, by the way. Um, he's been better than McGilbrey in Super League this year. Paul's played six, five, six, six, yeah. six games for the Roosters in the NRL, not scored a try in the NRL this year. I'm not saying he's a bad player, I'm not saying I'm not saying that. McGilbrey yeah, are all about players. Form, yeah, yeah. But if it, if it was based on form, obviously Liam Watts would be in there and mm. Regan Grace would. The, the subs that Wayne Bennett has named is Josh Jones, Tom Burgess, Johnny Lomax and Alex Wormsley. Now, I think three of them four picked themselves. Lomax is the interesting one because obviously they, they've gone with a back on the bench. Um, Probably do, just utility value, I think. Yeah, yeah so is that, do, you think, do you see him not playing unless there's an injury, maybe? No, I, I, think, I think Lomax will come on because he'll, he'll, he'll add a bit of zip as well, I think, because he's a game changer, isn't he? He can flip the game on its head. Can Lomax, when he comes on, he can <coughs> come on in the halves, or, or if Coote's not having a good game, or if, he's in, if he gets injured, then Lomax can also slot in at full-back. Or you could do a couple of things. You could move Widdop at full-back and then put Lomax on. It, in it, interesting that Lomax got the nod ahead of Connor, who's got utility value, Williams, Daryl Clark. Well, uh, well, Hodgson's an 80-minute hooker. He plays 80 minutes for Canberra every week, so you don't really have to put Daryl Clark on the bench. Um, Jake Connor, it, well, it was out to Jake Connor and probably um, Lomax to, to get that number 14 shirt in effect. Um, 
because Connor can play obviously in the centres, he could even play the wing if there was an injury, play in the halves. Um, but I think just because of the way good Lomax has been in Super League this year, that's what's got him. Uh, I mean, I mean again, Lomax has been a, a a mainstay in Wayne Bennett's England team since he was since yeah. he, he broke through. Um, so yeah, eight a.m. Saturday morning live on BBC Two. The Tonga team um, is yeah. Will Hopoati, David Fusitua, 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 Michael <laughs> Jennings, Katoni Staggs, Daniel Tupu. Um, Salford's Tui Lola here is at half back with Atta Hingano. Uh, Andrew Hingano is in the front row with Andrew Fafita and Silva Havili. Havili? Silva Havili? Yeah. Sio Takiaho. Takiaho? Sio Sisua Takiaho. Right. He's with, he's the other prop. Ben Murdoch Masilla. <laughs> ben Murdoch Masilla of Warrington and Hull's Manu Mao, or Hull bound Manu Mao, um, in the back row with Jason Tamalolo. The subs are Sione Katoa, Adin Follower Blake, John Asiata, and Sitili Tupuinia. Yeah? Tupuinia. Yeah. And Conrad Horrell not in the 17th. He's not, he was 18th man. 18th man is uh, Conrad Horrell. So Katoni Staggs, be interesting to see how he goes mm. in, in the centre. So yeah, so that's the first Great Britain test match. Not, of... not, not, it's quite a terrifying Tongan back, that, isn't it? Manu Mao and Ben Murdoch Massilla, your back rollers, Andrew Fafita, Jason Tomalolo. Well, Tokia um, is a goal kicking for, for uh, prop. Is he really? Right. Um, Tonga, Tonga, Great Britain at, in Hamilton, um, Saturday morning, BBC Two, 7 30, the coverage starts, 8 am kickoff. There's highlights on BBC One at quarter past one in the afternoon on Saturday, um, which are repeated at half past five on the red button, apparently. Um, all the uh, Great Britain games are live on BBC. Saturday, November the 2nd, we're going to draw straws as to who has to get up early for this one. New Zealand versus Great Britain. What time's that? I think that's a 4am kickoff. I think. Oh. Coverage starts at 3.30 on BBC Two. Oh. Um, so, yeah, that'll be an interesting one. Say that, uh, There's a full repeat on the red button at 9.30 in the morning. Uh, so if you can avoid the score overnight, you can have a nice morning in bed uh, a week on Saturday. Uh, highlights, quarter past one on BBC One. Um, the following week, Saturday, November the 9th, it's New Zealand and Great Britain again, this time at Christchurch. Um, that's a bit late, 6.30 that one, BBC Ooh, Two, so that's all right. A repeat again though at 9.30 if you want to lie in. Um, 1.15 the highlights on BBC One. And then the final test is Saturday, November the 16th, Papua New Guinea, um, 7 o'clock. BBC Two repeats at half eleven on the red button on November the sixteenth. Highlights a bit later on as well, half past four on BBC Two Saturday, November sixteenth, which is the weekend we'll be in France. So are they an hour ahead? They're an hour ahead of us in France. Are they? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah because Catalan on the kickoff so at that, six. So hang on, so, right, right, so, so so three o'clock in the morning here before o'clock there. So we'll be sound because it'll be. It work out well it, for us. We'll, we'll be all right, yeah. So well, we'll Saturday just have morning. to to find somewhere in France at the show in Papua New Guinea. Yeah, it's uh, a great, great Britain. Rugby league. Well, I mean, surely they, they should have a big screen on it, carcass on. Get all the French fans in early. Not get them four, on the ale. Not at four in the morning. Get them on the ale. Um, that's it. Love you. That that's it for <laughs> that's it from us for this week. Um, thanks everyone for your contributions. We're here every Thursday, twelve till one. We're sponsored by Betfred. Um, please keep it loverugbyleague.com for all the latest rugby league news uh, and we'll see you again next week.